Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the January 2022 DDD and U webinar. I hope everybody's off to a good start on their new year. I'm going to start off with a quick introduction. I am Lisa Nodhouse. I work for the Division of DD as the Supporting Families Statewide Lead, and I am also a parent. I have an adult daughter who receives services from the division and we get case management through our local case management county based uh, TCM entity here. As Kat shared uh, during this webinar, Trina Cookson, who is quality assurance specialist with the division and I are going to talk about the Missouri quality outcomes. And during this webinar, we're going to be talking about where they came from what they are, how they are used to guide supports and services, and how they help promote self-determination. So, where did they come from? If you are receiving services that funded through the Division of DD, it's very likely that you might have heard about them through your support coordinator or while you were planning for your individual support plan but you might not know how they were developed. The Missouri Quality Outcomes developed from efforts that evolved out of a very active steering committee that was created a little over 20 years ago, and they were created to help the division identify at that time what specific elements would indicate that people were experiencing a quality of life or living their good life, as you might have heard that term being used before. That committee consisted of very vocal self advocates, family members, division staff, and other interested stakeholders. As the work of that committee came to an end, they expressed their very strong desire to have all of their ideas and feedback captured and then outlined in a document that could be used to really help align services with people's goals and desires. And that document eventually grew into what is now known as the Missouri Quality Outcomes. Now, that was a huge document. I don't know if there's anybody on the webinar today that might remember that was like a 70 to 80 page document that was created. So, in 2015, the division decided to take a look at the outcomes again and to help determine if they were, number one, still relevant and to ensure that they were still helping people move toward their desired outcomes but also to make it into a more user-friendly document that folks could use as quick reference. So once again, the division put together a work group, which consisted of self-advocates, family members, stakeholders, and others, and their charge was to review and evaluate those outcomes again. That group worked to revise and streamline the original document and then help create what we now have today, talking points and uh, a guide. So what is the purpose of the outcomes? The outcomes actually help enhance person-centered approaches by promoting a focus that helps people express and share their personal values, make choices for themselves, address their health and safety needs, experience inclusion, and advocate for themselves. The outcomes and discussion guide also helps people facilitate important discussions with their planning teams and others. The discussions should reflect their personal goals and dreams, as well as define the kind of life that they want for themselves. So let's take a quick look at the principles or the seven areas that make up the Missouri quality outcomes. Those include daily life. And this outcome is really about helping people choose and explore possible daily activities. It can include employment. It might include volunteering, um, doing things that they enjoy throughout their day. The next one is community living, which is really about people being involved in choosing where they live and living in their community of their choice, being involved and active where they live and with who they want. The social and spirituality is really about individuals um, being a part of and involved in their community. Citizenship and advocacy. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I think I skipped one. Yeah, healthy living. I'm sorry. Um, community living, spiritual, social, social, getting to, to where they want to be. Um, safety and security. I'm sorry. This outcome is really about people uh, knowing about and understanding their rights. Citizenship and advocacy, here we go, is really about uh, having people learn about and know what their opportunities are to advocate for themselves. Supports to families is a big one. Um, families need education and support as well. And I'm real quickly, I'm going to see if I can. No, we have a guide uh, this link in the PowerPoint for the overview. When you pull up the PowerPoint later on, you will be able to link directly to a guide that we have created. That is a quick reference. It's about an 8 page document. And you'll also see at the bottom of the PowerPoint, the Missouri quality outcomes, a guide for individuals and families. That is a booklet that is geared really toward individuals and families. It's a small. Quick reference, it can also be downloaded and used during planning sessions or just to talk about quality of life. I also want to mention that if you're familiar with life course documents and the planning materials that are used there um, at the life course nexus at UMKC, you're going to notice that the core areas of the outcomes and the domain areas of the life course correspond with each other. Your support coordinator or your planning team might actually introduce those Missouri quality outcomes along with the complementary life course materials that are really going to help better assist you in planning. And now I'm going to turn it over to Trina so she can introduce herself and tell you more about how the division uses the Missouri quality outcomes in a lot of different ways. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. I'm going to steal the ball from you or you want to pass the ball, the folder. Go and I'll start sharing my screen. And Trina, I can advance those slides for you if you want me to. Uh, I was going to share my screen. I was trying okay. to share. Let's see here. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, you can see my screen now. I can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So Lisa mentioned I'm Trina Cookson with the state QE team and we're looking at how the division uses the Missouri quality outcomes and we do that in multiple ways, including planning, monitoring and trend reports. In regards to planning, the Missouri quality outcomes are integrated within the individual support plan guide and it's to assist the team in having discussions around key areas of importance to the individual. It also helps them to support their personal goals, dreams and other areas of interest. And so this all of this together promotes uh, continuous quality of life in regards to review and monitoring practices. The Missouri quality outcomes are measured every year through the quality of services review, or we refer to them as QSRs during the QSR process, which is outlined in guideline 54 and I'll bring that up. It's over. Sorry, I stopped sharing for a second. Bring 54 up. There, sorry about that. Okay, so guideline number 54. And this outcome, it, uh, the Missouri outcomes are reviewed with the person and their support team. If there's a finding tied to a specific outcome, the team talks about the findings and what needs to happen to better support that person. In addition, the division uses the QSR data to enhance services and supports. Examples from previous QSRs include increasing community access, updating the ISP to reflect personal goals, and individuals being supported to choose not only who they live with, but where they live. A Missouri Quality Outcome Handout is provided during this process. 
and it provides participants a, a crosswalk between the outcome and the HCPS code of federal regulations, but it also has each of the Missouri quality outcomes listed that Lisa just reviewed, the daily life and employment, community living, social and spirituality, healthy living, safety and security, advocacy and engagement, and supports to families. And like I said, it has a crosswalk with the outcomes with our federal regulations. Um, and going back underneath the guideline for additional information in regards to data from the five years of uh, the quality of services review that have been completed since 2017, there is this at a glance report here with data as well. During the QSR, the National Core Indicator Survey is also completed. The purpose of the NCI program, which began back in 1997, is to support member agencies to gather a standard set of performance and outcome measures that can be used to track their own performance over time, to compare results across states, and as well as to establish national benchmarks. It is a voluntary project and it gives participating states that, such as Missouri uh, a set of indicators that measure the performance of services and supports. Survey input is extremely important as this is the opportunity for individuals with developmental disabilities and their families a chance to give the division feedback. The division uses this feedback to improve the quality of services. Four of the NCIs are completed each year. To that, these are the NCI service surveys. So we have at least 400 adult in-person surveys which are typically completed face-to-face, -face, but currently with the COVID, um, we have been doing these remotely using video. Um, but they, these are conducted each year with individuals age 18 and older and receiving at least one paid DD service. As mentioned before, these surveys are conducted at the same time as the quality of services review, and they use the Missouri quality outcomes as a benchmark in determining the quality of services from the perspective of the individual receiving services. The second survey you see here is the adult family survey. There are 1,500 veiled surveys sent to families each year, and this is with families that have individuals that are age 18 and older and receiving at least one paid DD service. The child family surveys is the same thing. Those are mailed out, but these are sent to families with an individual younger than age, age 18 and receiving at least one paid service. And the last survey here, the staff stability survey. And that is completed online by provider agencies. And of course, it includes information in regards to direct support, professional wages, tenures, benefits, et cetera. So in regards to how are they used, we'll look at the Missouri Quality Outcome and New Reports, and it's based off the data from all of these surveys just discussed. These reports, you might've heard them uh, and see that in parentheses, they were known as at a glance reports. And I'll go back and share those. Okay. Five reports thus far are advocacy and engagement, daily living and employment, healthy living, safety and security, NCI, and the Missouri quality outcomes. We'll take a quick look at the Missouri quality outcome and advocacy and engagement report. As you can see, this one was completed in June of 2021. And taking a quick look at the table of contents, you see it covers in general the Missouri Quality Outcomes, what is NCI, um, a general overview about the report, and then more specifically, we've got about self-determination, self-advocacy, guardianship, supported decision-making. I'm going to skip to slide 19. And at the surveys that we were just talking about that are either mailed out or conducted in person or via WebEx, um, the data from this is included in this report. So this is an example of the levels of guardianship. So the blue, like the 65%, those are completed um, from the adult family surveys that were sent out. And the orange, the 71%, um, which we got feedback of full guardianship, those were completed um, during the quality of services review. So that was from the NCI survey as we're going out and doing the QSRs. So like I said, from those two surveys, we can see a majority of individuals, whether it was from the mailed in survey or the one completed in person, was 65% and 71%. Limited guardianship consisted of 10% for the mailed in surveys and 4% for those that were in person with the QSRs. And then of course, no guardianship was at 22 and 25%. Okay. 
Last but not least, we're looking at, um, as Lisa mentioned er earlier, about promoting self-determination. One of the great ways about that is um, Kate Bartley, who is um, our NCI coordinator, she has helped develop and put together with uh, UMKC these talking point series. And all of these are usually about three to five minutes long. There might be a few that are a little bit longer, but they have a lot of variation in um, teaching about our Missouri quality outcomes as well as self-advocacy. As you can see from the different episodes down there, episode one is introduction to the Missouri quality outcomes. Two is NCI and at a glance. The episode three is on safety and security. Four is healthy living. Five is daily life and employment. And then we have uh, six, which is advocacy and engagement. So I'd like to, uh, the first one, the quality outcomes, it's about four minutes long. So I'd like to go ahead and um, we'll have that play. And please let me know if you can or can I hear this, so. Welcome to the Missouri Quality Outcomes Talking Point Series. This series is designed to share information and resources that may be important to you and your family to help you reach your personal goals. Today, we will be providing the first in a series of informational episodes, Introduction to the Missouri Quality Outcomes. This is brought to you by the Missouri Division of Developmental Disabilities and the University of Missouri Kansas City Institute for Human Development. What are the Missouri Quality Outcomes? The Missouri Quality Outcomes were created by people with disabilities, their families, and professionals in the field. The Missouri Quality Outcomes are used to bring about discussion on areas important to your individual goals and quality of life. The Missouri Division of Developmental Disabilities also uses the Missouri Quality Outcomes to identify areas in which services could be improved. The five quality of life domains for individuals, which were borrowed from UMKC's Institute for Human Development's Charting the Life Course Framework, are daily life and employment, what people do every day that is meaningful for them, such as going to school, working, volunteering, daily routines, and life skills. Community living, where and how people live, such as their home, ways of getting around town, and community involvement. Social and spiritual, how people are connecting with others, such as their friendships, relationships, social activities, and faith communities that people may be involved in. Healthy living, how people stay well and manage their health through choices related to mental health, physical health, nutrition, and access to healthcare providers. Citizenship and advocacy, how people form valued roles in society, such as making meaningful choices, setting goals, and taking personal responsibility. Safety and security, how people are staying informed about being safe and secure, such as emergency preparedness and planning, as well as learning about abuse and neglect, individual rights, and self-advocacy. Join us as we explore each life domain and related information that can help support you and your family. For more information about the Missouri Quality Outcomes, and the services and supports available, visit the Department of Mental Health's Division of Developmental Disabilities website at umh.mo.gov front slash dev dash disabilities. Please join us next time for the Missouri Quality Outcomes Talking Point Series, Episode 2, NCI and At a Glance. This program is partially funded by the Administration for Community Living through the Projects of National Significance Program. Okay. So there, as we mentioned before, there are several. There are up to six episodes. 
like I said, they're three to maybe five minutes long. We encourage everyone to uh, share this information with anybody and everybody um, to, you know, like I said, help with um, do self advocacy and just more information that we can share with the individuals that we provide services to the better. So I will pass it back over to Lisa. Thank you so much, Trina. Please get our PowerPoint caught up here. And absolutely, I love those videos. Caitlin did such a good job of, of helping put those together and they did a much better job of describing the outcomes than I did earlier. So absolutely refer to those um, for future reference if you need and make sure you share those with the individuals and the families that you're supporting as well. Um, before we wrap up today, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that the division is once again getting ready to take a look at the outcomes and they're going to do this through a series of town hall forums. Those are still being planned out, so we don't have dates yet, but uh, that information will be rolled out through our division blasts um, email blasts that we have and, and put into our newsletter. So. Make sure you're looking for those because we really appreciate and value the feedback that we get from the self advocates and the families that we work with. So, and with that, I just want to remind everybody to connect to the division so that you do stay up to, to speed with what's going on. We have our division email or system that I just talked about, our website. You can access our email blast there as well as check out our newsletter that's online. Um, and we have just recently been upscaling our division Facebook page. So if you're a Facebook user, I strongly encourage you to go out, find us on Facebook and follow us there. We share a lot of information in that venue as well. And the next Mo DD DNU webinar is scheduled for February 22nd, 1230 to 1. So grab your lunch and plan to join us for that event. And thank you so much, Trina, for your information and sharing that with folks. Thank you to everyone who has joined on the webinar and look forward to seeing you next month. Oh, and I see that Trina has put a lot of the links that we talked about into uh, the chat. So if you want to check those out, you can. And I'm also going to send those. We're going to put those together and I'm going to send those to Kat and she can post those as a separate document with the PowerPoint and presentation today when she puts those on the website. Thank you all.